Hello, I'm Hannah, and this is Hannah's Books. Welcome back. Today I'm celebrating Tag Tuesday by answering the Jane Austen July tag, put together last year, I believe, by Marissa and Katie, the host of Jane Austen July, that wonderful time to enjoy work by and about Jane Austen and her time. Kelly, at Books I'm Not Reading, did a great version of this tag last week and inspired me to make my own. Let's get to the prompts. The first one is, what is your favorite Jane Austen book? Depending on the day, I'm likely to tell you my favorite is Emma, but mostly because I've loved Emma since I was 12 years old or so. I'm also really likely to choose Pride and Prejudice, a book that so often seems almost perfect in its balance of characters. When I was in late high school, I think I might have chosen Sense and Sensibility as my favorite, which appeared in my life at just the right moment. If you ask me in late October, as Halloween comes around the bend, I might choose Northanger Abbey. Fairly recently, I got really excited about Mansfield Park because of the discussion of social class and the role of theater, my son's big love, because of the small discussion of slavery, which was one of my father's major historical fields, etc. And I can imagine that there might be days I could choose persuasion with its story of second chances and the ways maturity can lead to a certain kind of independence. I love them all. There is a bit of Jane Austen I really have disliked so far, and which I'm not quite ready to try again. Lady Susan. If you would like to stand up for it in the comments, please do. Maybe you can help me change my mind. Or call out your favorite and tell me why you feel the way you do. I've always had trouble figuring out which books are my favorites by any author but it's definitely especially hard with Jane Austen, who has been such an important writer for me for so long. The second prompt asks us to name our favorite Jane Austen protagonist. I do love Emma, but I think I'm gonna name Eleanor Dashwood here. In Sense and Sensibility, Marianne embodies passion and romance and spontaneity, but Eleanor represents not sensibility, but sense. She's the quiet one, the person who thinks through everything and doesn't fly off the handle, and who's the comforter of other people. It isn't that she does not have emotions, but sometimes she's willing to sacrifice her own desires for the sake of others. She holds her tongue sometimes when she knows that expressing her own passions at a particular moment might be a cruelty to the people she loves. She isn't just polite, papering over any real conflict. Instead, her restraint is real and principled, an acceptance and even love of who people really are, despite seeing their flaws. And she sees her own flaws more than her passionate peers often seem to see theirs. I really love Eleanor's commitment to building a community, despite the craziness we all express. She's quite internal, not sharing all of her moment-by-moment emotions with others. And that more introverted style is definitely one I like, as long as the author allows us to see inside a character's head a bit as well, as Austen does in her work. All right, prompt number three, my favorite. Name a book off your shelves that you think Jane would wholeheartedly approve of, and why. I'll choose two authors here. The first is a book I just reread last month as part of a read-along, I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. I think Austen would love Smith's spunky main character, the crazy side characters, the setting of an English castle filled with writers, the place of familial financial crisis, and even the love interest that maybe shouldn't be. Like Austen, it's a sweet book full of sharp wittiness. There's something so comforting about I Capture the Castle, but it isn't a saccharine sweetness at all. Although there are clearly a few references to things Austen might not understand, I don't think it would take much of a leap for Jane to fall in love with Smith's book. I think she might even see some links to her own novel, Emma. 
The other book I'd love to pull off my shelves and share with Jane is The Pursuit of Love by Nancy Mitford. Mitford definitely brings Pride and Prejudices, the Bennett sisters, into the 20th century. I can imagine Austin would be a little startled initially, but her own love of all that is witty and her own ability to poke sometimes sharp fun at those in positions of power will help Austin adjust to Mitford. The discussions about how power and marriage are connected would make these two authors love each other, I think. And once Austin was cackling over our Nancy Mitford book, I might hand her the nonfiction American Way of Death by Nancy's sister Jessica Mitford, although that one might take even more explaining. Actually, I have one more to mention that Austin might enjoy, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I think she would totally see Alcott's discussion of sisters and the constraints upon women, the expectation of marriage and the story of a young woman who is a writer as a natural choice for her bookcase. I would especially love to see what she thinks of the outcome of Joe's romantic life. Any thoughts? How would Little Women be different if Jane Austen wrote it? The fourth prompt. Name a book off your shelves you think Jane would have hated and why. I suspect Jane would have hated both the novels and short stories of Flannery O'Connor. Note, I love both writers, so I'm not just saying that Austen will hate what I hate. Yes, I don't think Austen would be a huge fan of so-called dude bro lit, and she and I could chat over tea as we commiserate about its presence as a genre. But Flannery O'Connor is a very different story. Her work comes out of two very different kinds of Christianity than the kind that Austen experienced in her community, both rigorous Catholicism and primitive or evangelical Protestant practice. Her work is very witty, but in a blunt and almost violent way. O'Connor writes with a sword, it sometimes seems to me. But you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Austin would appreciate O'Connor's focus on how tradition and history reinforce class, how domesticity and community relationships play out on such an intimate level. And maybe Jane Austen would find O'Connor's brutal endings to be a certain kind of freedom. Did Austen really imagine that she could ever be published if she wrote endings that were not nicely resolved? If her books were tragedies, even violent tragedies? In general, I tend to assume that people will like what is somewhat similar to their own styles. But that, of course, is not always true. Often what pulls us in can be the shock of something really different that opens our eyes. So maybe, at least some of the time, I think Austin might have actually liked O'Connor. Number five, who is your favorite minor Jane Austen character? I really love Mr. Woodhouse, Emma's father, with his almost innocent and protective eccentricity. He is wrong-spirited, in a way quite different from Emma's, And he can create roadblocks to other people's happiness. But he doesn't do it out of cruelty. He does it out of misguided love. He is totally self-centered, but not egotistical in quite the meaning we usually give it today as someone who eagerly puts other people down on an effort to raise himself up. I think Austin calls his behavior gentle selfishness or something like that. I also really love Miss Bates from the same book, She's fundamentally a kind person, a caretaker who looks after people in need with love and a giving heart. She's also a compulsive talker who rambles on about random, irrelevant things as if they're connected. We as readers laugh at her and look down on her with love maybe, but still we think she's a little pathetic. And then at a picnic when she's insulted, our allegiance shifts. We pity her, and at least I really identify with her at that moment. Both Miss Bates and Mr. Woodhouse are characters full of traits that Austin is mocking, but who are also characters she clearly loves. I think that Austin's acceptance and appreciation of eccentricity is one of the things I really love in her novels. Prompt number six asks us to name a book off her shelves 
that we feel was somehow inspired by Jane Austen's body of work. I remember a great quote I read once, although I don't remember where I saw it. It's something like this. We all know that no one can write like Jane Austen, but we keep searching and hoping because there are only so many times we can reread those half dozen books. I'll name two potential follow-ups. One that I suspect was a conscious echo of Austen, and one that might have been unconscious or unplanned. The first is pretty much any book by Barbara Pym. I know Sean, the book maniac, can give you some great leads here, as he's read her work more completely and more recently than I have. In my memory, her Some Tame Gazelle is one favorite, where Austen's mix of unmarried sisters and the presence of clergymen mix with a bit more acceptance of spinsterhood being a reasonable option at the heart of the story. Jane and Prudence is another wonderful novel, with its matchmaking heroine, a bit more mature than the matchmaking Emma, but with some serious echoes. Incidentally, there's a big new biography in the works about Barbara Pym, written by Paula Byrne and due out next spring. I can't wait. Byrne is an interesting writer. First off, married to Jonathan Bate, which must make for some wonderful bookish conversations over the kitchen table. And herself, the author of books, among others, about Evelyn Waugh and Jane Austen. I pre-ordered her pen biography. It comes out next year, right around my birthday, and I thought it would be a lovely birthday present to myself. I also pre-ordered a new novel coming out at the same time, written by a friend the mother of one of my son's musical friends when he was young. I can't wait for the end of April next year. Sorry for that swerve away from the tag. The other book that I always think has a bit of a Jane Austen lineage is Eudora Welty's Delta Wedding. Welty is probably best known for her short stories, and I believe Brian at Bookish is reading Welty's A Worn Path at the end of the month for his short story project. I was thinking I might make a recording of her hilarious Why I Live at the P.O. to tie in with his wealthy celebration. Anyway, she also wrote novels. Her book, Delta Wedding, seems especially linked to Austen to me, very much about the domestic and everyday experiences of women, about the complicated connections between family and class and marriage, about the importance of place and small community about the impact of history and tradition. This is a subtle book, not a saccharine one at all, and certainly one that does not portray the South in a romantic light. It's been a long time since I've read one of Welty's novels, and I think I may need to return to them sometime soon. Delta Wedding specifically is one I think about really regularly, despite the fact that I probably haven't read it since the previous century. Okay, prompt number seven. Which Jane Austen character do you simply love to hate? Austen is a master at creating gentle villains that make your skin crawl. Mrs. Elton from Emma is definitely a favorite, but I think the winner here for me is Mr. Collins from Pride and Prejudice. He is obsequious and slimy, a total sycophant, bootlicking his superiors. He also acts utterly entitled shocked when people are not grateful for his presence amongst them. <laughs> Although his eventual marriage is to a person who is seeking financial standing rather than love, she's no villain like Miss Elton from Emma. So we sort of get a sympathetic lens on Mr. Collins. Sort of. Well, as I'm sure you can tell, I love Jane Austen. I know many of you have done this tag since it's not a new one, but if you haven't, or if you have but might have some new things to say this year, give it a try. Thanks for joining me today here on Hannah's Books. See you soon.